Uh, Delta Sands. Not to be confused with Delta Rune Sands, you know, just Delta Sands from Ultra Tail. This Sands is very peculiar, really, and is one of the Sands I took a bit of inspiration from, from when I was, you know, coming up with the concept of Madness Sands, fun fact. Um, he's one of the more classic AUs from back in the day, back in like January of 2017. He's one of the more OGs, among them like Ink, Error, Nightmare, Dream, all like the OG OG people, Sanses from like 2016, 17 and all that, back when, you know, AUs were, you know, really going off in popularity. And from what I can tell, it's one of the few Sanses to be purely introduced off of an animation. The only exception really being uh, Cross Sans. Most other Sanses were introduced in comics or ass blogs on Tumblr, like, uh, you know, Error and Ink. So this is a fairly unique uh, Sans going into this. Uh, he was made by Animated Zorox, and he made his debut, of course, like I said, back in 2017. And if you know who Ultra Tail is, you would know that their main, like the main thing that got Delta popping off in popularity in the first place, was an animation, and you might be more familiar with the dub, with the dub that was, you know, came along with that animation. That was one, you know, one of the main things by Sans Comic TV that literally blew Ultra Sans's popularity through the fucking roof with episode one and two. Basically, in this video and many more to come, I'm going to be talking about a Sans and putting it on the tier list of how much I like it. And also, I'm going to be playing some clips of me and my friends who uh, watched, you know, uh, the two, ep two, the three episodes, and also um, some extra ones of Delta, just to, you know, get some funny reactions in there. So, I hope you, you'll probably enjoy that too. Say hi, guess. Hello. <laughs> Apparently, it's just me and you. All right, let's do this. Oh. <laughs> but uh without further ado let's you know talk about the story <laughs> to give the most brief way i could tell for how the origin of Delta Sands is, um, well, here it is, uh, you know, basically, you know, with the genocide fight, you know, basic Sans fighting Frisk, uh, uh, out of nowhere, apparently, Frisk transforms into this thing, this white blob, which later on is Kara and Frisk fused together, making Charisk, uh, you know, Sans gets, <laughs> uh, and Asgore comes in to save the day, along with Flowey, <laughs> giving Sans a bravery soul, Sans turns into Super Sans, and then basically turns into a shonen protagonist and beats Kara. Karisk. That's... If it sounds super simple, that's cause it is. There's not much nuance into Delta Sans' backstory, really. It's... it's that's basically how it is. <laughs> really. But he basically turns into a shonen protagonist in the way he talks. And honestly, I'm not that big a fan of it because sans feels really out of character the way he talks and stuff and outside of the fact that you know everyone is a frisk apologist in here basically making Kara the evil one yes this was back when everyone thought Kara was the main bad and everyone just kind of ran with it like literally Kara is perceived as the devil <laughs> the devil is just like basically <laughs> it's the ultimate evil Jesus Christ, and it, it, it turns me off a bit because that that's just not really how the story is in the base game, but that's neither here or there. Only the lower half, though. He's missing his... Don't be. You've done enough. On him when he got... I just don't understand. <laughs> it's... I can't... Slow it down, please. I beg of you. I can't take this. There's some type of jarring-ass whiplash from hearing Papyrus. I'm sorry, the Papyrus, who's supposed to be fucking dead, picks him up. And he goes, don't be, he shouldn't be sorry, and he immediately starts talking. There is, the pacing is terrible! Oh my <laughs> god! On a general writing level, the writing isn't, uh, great. 
that's not that doesn't seem to be a uh, Zorox's, you know, strong suit really. Um, Sans again feels way out of character. Kara is uncharacteristically evil, and for some reason, all of monsters, you know, Undyne, Alphys, Papyrus, and all of them. Papyrus makes sense, but everyone else, I, I guess because first did one pacifist timeline. Uh, I, I guess they're just forgiven for massacring the entire race. Okay. <laughs> they was car is doing. <laughs> so, yeah. Obviously, that's not, you know, the strong suit of this story. But the main meat of potatoes and the reason why everyone flocked to this, you know, character so well is because the animator, you know, Zorox, is a damn good animator. They're a really good animator. Like, it may not, like, of course, you know, animation ages with time most of the time. But, I mean, this one has shown a bit of its age, but it's still smooth as hell and really fucking good. Holy shit. It is still, honestly, one of the best pieces of animation that we've seen from the Undertale community of that era. And still holds up a bit now. Obviously, everyone's improved. We've seen better. Even Zorix has gotten better with their more recent episodes. But with episode 1 and 2, they're still pretty good. Even if there is a couple hiccups, you know, here and there. Though, I will say this one thing, though. Uh, the pacing is uh, terrible. <laughs> the pacing is really bad. Uh, literally, in the first minute of the first episode. Want to know what happens? Sans gets speed blitzed. Literally. Remember when I talked about, you know, you know, Sans getting cut? Yeah, you would have thought, oh, that probably happened like five minutes in. No, that was a minute in. Literally, an exact minute into the video, Sans is already down for the count and has the bravery soul. And I don't even, I, and also Karis goes super karis here, also. I don't know where everyone's getting these transformations from, so. But, uh, generally speaking, this series is absolutely a... Turn your brain off and just enjoy what you're watching. That, that, that is literally what Delta Sans or Ultra Tail is. You turn your brain off, don't think about what's happening, and just enjoy the beautiful animation. <laughs> First technique. Oh, oh, he's Gojo. What? <laughs> 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 Wait, Gojo's the one that with the blindfold around his eyes, right? The one that does the purple thing? Yeah. Or is that another? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we don't watch that garbage. I'm just... I just <laughs> <laughs> well, for the guys who, you know, love power scaling, uh, I'm basically just going to be going over the general abilities Delta has and, you know, his strengths and stuff. Basically, Delta Sans has a list of powers that include, but not limited to, telekinesis, bone manipulation, in increased strength, increased speed, a the ability to use a gaster blaster jetpack, regular gaster blasters, blue bones, gauntlet manipulation, basically where he's able to move his gauntlets from his fists to his legs and vice versa I would assume, and teleportation, and somehow multiverse teleportation. So. Power scaling wise, he's definitely one of the stronger Sanses out there. Definitely, I would say around a high B tier in terms of, you know, how strong they are, whether they're beating people like, you know, a Nightmare or Error is up for debate. I'll let you guys debate that in the comments, but they definitely have a decent amount of stamina that can, you know, lead them through a lot of battles, I would say. So, uh, yeah. That's Delta Sands for you. What do you think of Delta Sands? I'm actually curious. What do you guys think of Delta Sands? Is he a cool character? Is he boring? Is he cringe? What do you guys think? And uh, yeah, here's his place on the tier list. And don't forget to check out Matt.